In the following series of videos, I'm going to talk in detail how I went from several white oak logs to this table. In this video, I'm going to be talking about the design, how I came to that design with the customer and then the milling and the drying process. This order started out me receiving an email from a previous customer and then I went to her house and we kind of looked at some different pictures and ideas for this table. And the table is supposed to be going in a cabin that our family is restoring. It's now there, but at that time that cabin was being worked on. Once I kind of had a rough idea, I put together those sketches that you saw and sent that to her in an email and then she gave me a thumbs up knowing that that design could vary a little bit. That was just sort of a rough idea, direction, just to show her that I understood. Anytime you're doing a custom order, it's kind of tricky to just really settle up on an exact, exact design in a sketch or just in an exchange with a customer. It's best to have some leeway to where you can um, kind of accommodate different things that you may run into during the process, whether that be materials, tool limitations, or so on. So always give yourself a little cushion in the design if you're getting into doing some custom work. Once that design was settled up on, I contacted my sawyer and we worked together to locate some white oak logs. These logs came from a nearby tree service company. They had cut them down off someone's property and uh, my sawyer is the one that actually found them and then I paid for them. They were about $350, $400. I can't remember the exact cost. And one thing you want to always do is uh, be good to your people that you sort of rely on to get your materials and different services that you require for your business or your hobby. It doesn't really matter. For example, I always pay my sawyer more than he asks, and I don't think he expects it, and, um, and I'm not looking for any kind of major points or anything. I just want him to feel good every time he sees my number pop up on his phone and I'm calling needing something. I don't want him to think of me as uh, a problem person. And all these logs you've been seeing me milling, or not me milling, I'm just there, is some walnut logs that he was milling when I showed up that day. So I just thought I'd show those for the intro and for you to see that color of what walnut looks like when it's milled. It's not brown like you think of it right when it's being milled. It's kind of a nasty yellow green. So I just thought I'd show that process. And here are the logs this project is actually going to be made out of, the white oak logs. Extremely straight, and there was only a few knots. They weren't too bad. And um, even where those knots are in the end, this is not sort of supposed to be some super refined table. So if there is a knot in the grain of the wood, it's, it's, it's not a problem. And then in addition to those logs, he had uh, had some other white oak that he had already milled up that he didn't really have anything uh, in particular he was going to be using it for. So he milled that up for me too, and that included a bunch of uh, um, eight quarter materials, more like nine or ten quarters. So basically uh, more than two inches and then some four by fours. When this whole order started, I was supposed to build this customer a kitchen island in addition to the table, so it was going to be two very large pieces, the table and a kitchen island, but they ended up going a different route with the kitchen island and substituted getting me to build them a farm table and benches. So for this project, I ended up with way more wood than I needed. I would have, Even if I would have built that kitchen island, I would have had way more um, white oak than I needed, but that's okay. I use oak on my tabletops, plus it's some really high-grade lumber anyway that I can save for personal projects. And you can see that that log measured, I think, about 22 by 24 inches. And so the first step in the milling process is just getting the log into position, and that first cut is just going to sort of determine the rest of the cuts to square this log off. And all of this lumber is being quarter sawn, which means you basically cut the log into four quarters, like a piece of pie, and then from there you're going to take cuts off of each face, going back and forth, and this is going to get you a grain orientation where the growth rings are going in the direction that the board is thick uh, versus flat sawn, where the growth rings would be um, running across the board's width. And what this does is it's a very predictable, uh, it's very predictable in the way that the wood will shrink and move. It's basically going to shrink very evenly, and most of the shrinkage will happen in the board's thickness, which will be minimal anyway. So the keen observer will notice that I got there a little after six from the clock in my truck as I pulled in the driveway and um, had to finish milling up all of that walnut. And I helped it, which got it done fairly quick for how much it was. Uh, so we ended up milling into the night. I just turned my truck on, hit the headlights, and we milled until about 10.30 at night. Got one of the logs cut up, and then we hit a nail 
which kind of uh, knocked the blade for a loop. And so I came back the next day about the same time and uh, got going and we finished milling everything up. We got a couple minutes of milling video coming up, so I want to talk a little bit about finding sources like this Sawyer for you guys. I get a lot of questions, people asking if I can put them in contact with this fella, if they can buy wood from me, if they can try to buy wood from him. But uh, he is not really in the business of milling wood for other people, but he has gotten kind of caught up in doing it, but then has seriously cut down his list of people he's willing to do this for as he's milling for his own business as well. So I'm one of the lucky few that haven't annoyed him in the past, so he doesn't mind doing some stuff for me, and that is a huge advantage because there's a limited amount of people in my area that are doing this type of work, especially the full service of milling and drying. He's also just a really nice guy to know in general, so I'm very thankful for that. Uh, for those of you out there who are looking for stuff like this, you'll probably find uh, lumber that has been sawn but not dry, uh, dried a lot. Your options there are to just to buy that lumber and stack it and air dry it, and then maybe try to finish off air drying it inside of your shop if it's got air conditioning, which would get it down to, you know, whatever, you know, uh, moisture percentage you need it to be, whether that be 6, 7, or 8 percent. just depends on where you live. Some places it's even higher in really humid areas. But uh, how I found this guy originally is just started calling up every single number that I could think of that may know this. I called up different sawmills that I knew of. I started calling um, uh, different hardware stores and everything. And eventually, I kind of did this little thing where I, you know, through several phone calls, I landed on this guy. And um, he said, sure, come on up. And, and what I needed originally was is I needed a kiln. That was the main thing I was looking for to stick a bunch of reclaimed wood in uh, just to make sure that there were no bugs alive in it. I had built a table and then a um, customer told me that there was some dust on the on the chairs underneath. So there was some bugs in there and one of them had kind of tunneled its way out and, and then when it did that it caused some sawdust to fall down. So I got that uh, that table back from that customer, took it apart. Luckily I had kind of screwed it all together and um, and uh, kiln dried all those boards again and then put it back together. But then it kind of turned into this whole thing with this fella and it's been great. I've gotten uh, all kinds of wood from him, whether it just be drying, um, heat treating my reclaimed wood or having him completely saw from a log. And this is the kiln from the last video. I just assumed that people knew this was the kiln, but I got some messages asking if I used the wood green. So what the kiln is, is an extremely insulated little cinder block building and then on the interior there's fans going down the center on the ceiling and then the workings of the kiln are to the left there you can see that metal box. Basically that's an electric heat source and a dehumidifier. You heat the building up with the heat source and then the dehumidifier removes the air, uh, the moisture from the air and the fans are circulating the heat. So you can see which direction it would go, it's blowing from the left side of the building to the right and then it's circulating through the boards because the boards are all spaced out. So it's pretty neat how it works and there's different types of uh, kilns. You can have solar kilns, electric kilns, I'm sure gas kilns, conveyor belt kilns. There's there's many different kinds, vacuum kilns. Um, this is one that you could build at home and buy the uh, you know the components to make it work, all the actual kiln parts and then the building itself you just need a very insulated container of some sort. So you saw me getting everything loaded up. I'm just there getting it loaded up. He's uh, off working in his own shop right now down the road and he's really cool about that. I can kind of come up there and come and go whenever I want, drop logs off, pick wood up. And he's not funny about things. He's not jerking the measuring tape out each time, taking a measurement on every single last board uh, to charge you. It's quite the opposite. A lot of times he, you know, just wants to, he'll tell you, you know, how about $40 or, you know, he just kind of estimates things. And it's always just so low, you know, you want to shake your head. So always make sure to pay him more than he asks. You know, I want to keep him happy. Never want him to uh, think of me as somebody who's trying to take advantage of him. This has turned more into, you know, he's a friend of mine of sorts versus just some guy that I get to, you know, make boards for me. And that's something you know, for those of you out there, when you find somebody like this, make sure you take care of them. You know, don't abuse them. Uh, don't take them for granted. 
you know he's got uh, all kinds of equipment and years of experience to use it all so that's something that I don't have to burden myself with so when you somebody does something for you make sure that you pay them what it's worth even if they are basically trying to give it to you in this case of milling all this lumber all three of those white oak logs um, and and that other wood that I showed laying on the ground in those 4x4s I mentioned he wasn't even going to charge me for any of that I paid for the logs again they were like $350-380 but that was just paying him back for buying those logs from that tree service fella so you know I had to give him more money obviously so I did force some money on him I had to come up with what I thought it would be worth add a little more to that and then again just on those little interactions we have where I show up there to just pick some wood up like some reclaimed wood and he says you know 20 bucks you know at least give him 40 that kind of thing you know always give somebody a little bit more if anything else it'll make you feel better about it but it's going to make them feel better about it too because you never know one day when you're really going to have to uh use them hard and you don't want them to say no so uh that pretty much wraps up all my thoughts on this video the next video is going to be on building the top and I'm going to try to be pretty detailed on those. I'll do less talking like this, sort of my uh, philosophy on finding and talk, dealing with different um, people that you may need to help facilitate what it is that you do. So hope you all enjoyed this video. Be sure to leave comments below or questions below, and then I'll try to address those in the following videos. And if you're looking for more thoughts on business-related topics, I have some different videos I'll link to in the description below. And I also wrote a short ebook. It's called How I Make Money, Woodworking, Developing a Product. And the book focuses on centering your business around a product and thinking of it as a product versus your service as a woodworker. And it's helped a lot of people, and I've had several people tell me that they totally restructured the way they're actually running their small woodworking business, which is good to know that that's helping them. Well, thank you all for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.